Good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so we will know that you are watching, so I will know <laughs> that you are watching. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, if you could type a number one in the comments so we all can welcome you to the broadcast. Good morning as you all are coming on you know what to do go ahead and share I am um, beginning to share out this broadcast as well go ahead and share onto your personal pages and into your community groups good morning good morning somebody type in the comments God did it again it is a great day to be alive so go ahead and type in the comments God did it again we were on the wake up list and that is not a small thing so we just want to go ahead and tell the Lord thank you <laughs> so go ahead and type that in the comments uh, it's always so good to see you all. I'm excited to um, continue where uh, we left off on the topic of pride. So um, you all go ahead and type in the comments. Um, what time did you go to bed last night? What time did you wake up this morning? Um, go ahead and share that in the comments and let me... Um, get logged in here so I can get this shared. If um, you are on here and you are in the weight loss and lifestyle changes group, if you don't mind sharing this in there, when I share it to the timeline uh, for whatever reason, they are not able to find me. So if someone can share that in there, that would be amazing. If you have not already i need to refill my oil if you have not already grab your anointing oil make sure that you have anointed your hands keisha why are your hands so oily every morning i anoint my hands with oil and make sure you go ahead and type this in the comments my hands are blessed my hands are blessed my hands are blessed go ahead and type that in the comments my hands are blessed everything that i touch is blessed everything i touch prospers everything i touch multiplies everything i touch turns to gold amen these blessed hands will lay hands on the sick they will be healed and they will recover how do i know how do we know? Because the Bible tells us so. Amen. So make sure you've anointed your hands. Um, people are always asking, where do you get your oil from? I, I mix my own oils and then just kind of keep refilling um, this bottle. So that's where my oil comes from. All right. So I think I'm logged in here. I think I'm logged in here. So I'm going to share this to um, the We Write the Word community. I'm the Walking for His Glory community. And I'll need someone to share this to... Uh, we write the word for me and let me see hold on all right thank you Carolyn I see that you shared it in the um, weight loss and lifestyle changes group so I went ahead and approved the post we have to approve the post in that group so we are all set all right you all I don't know Facebook is doing its own thing I don't know yeah I don't know what Facebook is doing with the videos and sometimes people are like I can't find you I'm like I was live I promise you I was there uh, but anyway there's always a way around it you all help me get it out right Facebook yes they are something else sometimes um so yes my hands are blessed my hands are blessed and go ahead and share what time did you go to bed last night what time did you wake up this morning uh i don't know for, i have n i can't remember what time i went to bed <laughs> but all i know is that i got up at 3 30 today i hit the snooze button about two or three times but I got up, all right, I got up, <laughs> but I got up, somebody type in the comments, I got up, um, what else are we doing, Z uh, that's Soraya, she has to be at work at 6 o'clock in the morning, that is so early for her to have to be at work, so I'll have to make sure I am done um, at a decent time so I can uh, get her, yeah, so we can leave the house, all right, so I think we're done. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you are on this broadcast live or if you are catching the replay, that means that you were on the wake up list. Um, and that's not a small thing. So let's go ahead and begin to thank the Father. Um, type in, at, in the comments at least one thing that you are thankful for at least one thing that you are thankful for and then we'll dive in so father we honor you father we love you father we bless you you are good in every way there is to be good and we just want to say 
thank you. Someone type thank you in the comments for me. Good morning, Tanika. So good to see you. We just want to say thank you. We thank you for being our protector. We thank you, Father, for protecting us through the night from things that we have no idea that you have protected us from. We say thank you. That's right. Thank you for everything, Jesus, everything. We thank you, Father, for a sound mind. You all put your hands on your head when you say this because it's not a small thing that he woke us up with a sound mind. Listen, I didn't always have a sound mind, so why do I thank him every day? <laughs> I thank him because I have a sound mind. So we thank you, Father, for a sound mind. We thank you for a sound mind on today. We thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time with you. We thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time in your word. We say thank you. Someone say thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. Um, make sure that you have shared the video. Um, it's a fine time to evangelize, and there's no better way to do that than to um, share the video. And after you've shared it, come back and type in hashtag shared. Um, definitely sow, this, sow a seed of the word of God into the lives of those that are on your timelines and those that are in your community groups. You never know who needs this encouragement. Because believe it or not, there are two things, you know, sometimes people wake up super early and they're just like, I need, I need some encouragement and they're just mindlessly scrolling and see this video. Um, or there are people that have a hard time sleeping that are honestly still up right now um, that are just mindlessly scrolling and then they run into um, us here on Waking Early for His Glory. So um, thank you all so much for helping me to share and just get out, get the word out, get, you know, put out there what we're doing here at Waking Early for His Glory because I know it's blessing so many people. And I, I just thank God for each and every one of you. Listen, it's been almost two years now and I have not shown up by myself one day. So thank you all so much for getting up this early in the morning <laughs> with me. Uh, my nephew Seven just came on. Say hello to Seven and let's dive in. Um, this little hair is on my neck. Here we go. I found it. So let's just get rid of that. Um, Psalms 37, 18 is our opening verse. Psalms 37, 18. If someone can type that in the comments for me. Psalms 37, 18. And it reads, day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent and they will receive an inheritance that lasts forever. Day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent and they will receive an inheritance that lasts forever. Somebody just go ahead and tell the Lord, thank you. All right. Um, I don't think I changed. Did I update the title on this video? I'm not sure. Let's, uh, okay, I'll fix it later. So our prophetic word for today, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. <laughs> let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Every time I hear that, I want to start singing that song. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let today be a day of rejoicing with gladness. Somebody type in the comments, I am glad. <laughs> Somebody type in the comments, I am glad. Even if you don't feel like you are, go ahead and type it in the comments. I know that there are days that you don't feel your best. Know that your weakness does not take me by surprise or upset me. You are a winner in my eyes and against all odds. Why? Because you are my child, says the father, as I provided fresh manna from heaven daily for the children of Israel. I will do the same for you. Somebody type in the comments. He is the same God. He is the same God, I am your daily bread and nourishment. When you are weak in spirit, I will send angel food to provide for you to be strong in the spirit, to be strong in the spirit. I know that temptations come to challenge your faith and, and commitment toward me. And I know, listen, if we can be honest, if we can be real, that is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Let me read that again. I know that the temptations come to challenge your faith and commitment toward me. And I know the inner warfare inside of you. Know that I don't see you as a failure. Somebody needs to hear that on today. The father saying to you, know that I don't see you as a failure. Know that I don't see you as a failure, but I view you as an overcomer. So, 
he doesn't see us as a failure. So therefore, we should not see ourselves as failures. And I know sometimes, listen, hashtag ask me how I know we can be so hard on ourselves and feel like we failed and feel like, listen, when you run businesses, you, 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 know, you will never look at failure the same again. When I fail at something, I get excited. Although I'm not a failure, you know, it's, it's possible us to fail at things, but that doesn't mean that we are failures. There's a difference. And so, um, little rabbit trail, I don't, I don't look at you. I don't look at you through the dark lenses of condemnation, but clearly through the eyes of love. And listen, conviction is from God. Condemnation is not. Conviction is of God condemnation is not okay he says i don't look at you through the dark lenses of condemnation but clearly through the eyes of love thank you for sharing um annie for those of you that have not shared yet go ahead and share the broadcast you never know who needs to hear this love covers those things that come to haunt you and become a stumbling block to your purpose i love you through the lenses of my dear son jesus christ whose blood was the atonement for your sins don't judge yourself or condemn yourself don't judge yourself or condemn yourself but arise and know that you have been liberated somebody type in the comments amen somebody type in the comments amen all right, so just remember that conviction is from God. Condemnation is not, and he does not see you as a failure. Uh, Tanika says, Yahweh, thank you. Yes, amen. And so we need to see ourselves through the same eyes that he sees us through, through the eyes, through the lenses of love. All right, so that was our um, prophetic word for today, our daily devotional for today. Um so we are going to pick up where we left off. If you are new to the broadcast, welcome. Uh, we definitely want you to go back to watch the replay of the past maybe three videos, um, at least three or four videos. Could be about three, four, I'm not sure. They're all titled in some way with the title Pride in it um, because we're kind of just picking up where we left off. I had a lot to share on the topic of pride. And as I said yesterday, if you're thinking, oh, you know, I can kind of just log off the broadcast because this is not for me. I don't struggle with pride. I think you need to stay here because that's exactly what pride wants you to believe. Pride does. It. Pride is not going to want you to hear this message. Um, so definitely don't log off. <clears throat> All right. And so we'll go over the definition of pride again. The first definition of pride is proper respect for oneself sense of one's own dignity or words or self-respect right and then there's another definition that we use more most often more in a positive sense and that definition is delight or satisfaction in one's own or another's achievement and so if you go to the word of god the word warns us against pride it does not talk about pride in a positive sense i yet we have to find it if it's there somebody please bring it to my attention because i have been yet to find it um we know that uh the word warns us against pride pride is dangerous god hate pride pride comes before the fall you know we read all of those verses concerning pride pride and so we talked about problems with pride and i'll just run through a few of those again um pride brings destruction we talked about how pride brings strife again if you catch the replay you can get all the scripture ref scripture references for this um, pride is very deceptive um, it will deceive us about ourselves it will deceive us about others it will also deceive us about um about God. Good morning. Good morning to all of you that just tuned in. Please go ahead and share the broadcast and come back and type in hashtag share it and share at least one thing in the comments that you're thankful for. All right. So uh, pride also deceives us about our direction um, in life. Pride is an avenue of temptation. We talked about how pride is a sin and God hates pride. And we even, I gave you all some scripture references um, about God's attitude towards pride. He hates pride. God resists the proud and God finds the proud to be an abomination. So his attitude towards pride should be a sure enough reason why we want to tune in and lean in and pay attention to what he's speaking, right? Um, in this broadcast, because, um, this is his attitude towards pride. 
And this is enough to make me want to search my own self and say, is there any pride in me? If this, it, just burn it up, <laughs> right? And we, we, we don't, God hates pride, all right? And so that is his attitude towards pride. Um, and then we also talked about, um, we'll, we'll stop there because we'll stop there. And then I'll jump into where we left off. So basically what we're doing is digging a little bit deeper. All right. And yesterday I gave you all some scripture references and I'll give you all a few more. Listen, we've had a whole lot over the past, you know, what, four or five, three or four broadcasts. And so what do we do? We fight pride with the word, right? The word of God is medicine. Um, if we are dealing with anything that is not of God, we can consider ourselves sick, right? And if we go to the doctor and we're sick physically, what do they do? They give us medication. So what do we do? We take our medication, God's medicine, the word, and we apply it to the area that we're sick in. So what does that look like? If you're sick in the area of pride, you go see what the word says about pride. If you're sick in the area of you know, in your fi in your finances, you go see what the what the word says about finances. Whatever it is, it, yes. So you fight pride with the word. Um, so I'm going to give you a few more scripture references. I'm going to read them off to you to type. I'm going to give you the scripture references to type in, so I can read them straight through. I like just reading it, reading the word straight through. All right. So the first one is Proverbs eight thirteen. Please write this down. All right. Proverbs eight thirteen. Proverbs eight thirteen. Um, and the second one is Jeremiah 9, 23. Jeremiah, that's right. Jeremiah 9, 23. Um, the third one is 1 John 2, 16. 1 John 2, 16. Someone type these in the comments as well, please. Um, and the fourth one is Romans 12, 16. Romans 12, 16. So we started out the past two broadcasts with Bible verses about pride. All right, and my prayer is that you got your you get your Bible, grab your highlighters, grab your journal. Let me let me get a sip of water. Hold on, I need some water. I usually try to drink water before the broadcast, but I didn't do that today, and that's not good. Um, my voice just acts crazy. So the first one was Proverbs eight thirteen, Jeremiah nine twenty three. 1 John 2, 16. See what a little water does for your throat. Uh, Romans 12, 16. All right. So we fight pride with the word. We fight pride with the word. So now we are moving into the fruit of pride. So what is the fruit? The fruit is behaviors or attitudes that we need to stop doing. So um, pride is going to tell you, you don't need to hear this. So therefore, you need to hear this, right? Um, I listen, I know, I know, I feel it, I sense it, I can just feel it. I can feel pride fighting this so strongly, you know, try to get some of you to log off the broadcast. And I just want to say, hang in there. Let me, I hear notifications, hang in there, all right? So, fruits of pride and so with that being said there are so many people we all know people that run around saying I'm I'm so humble I'm so humble I'm so humble I'm humble I'm humble I'm humble and if you're truly humble you do not have to run around telling the whole entire world that you're humble you don't need to shout that you're humble from the mountaintops right um, and so people do that and we already know what God's attitude is um, towards pride we know that pride go ahead and type this in the comments pride is dangerous pride is a very dangerous thing so i'm excited to still be showing up kind of just talking about this um so you can run around and shout as loud as you can even what's, what's those things a bullhorn look at the fruit look at the fruit look at the fruit look at the fruit the main that when i see people running around shouting from the mountaintops i'm so humble I look at the fruit and so we've been looking at that and it's been like an ouch and you know an ouch moment so make sure you have on your steel toe boots this morning because it's going to be a whole lot of ouches <laughs> is that a word ouches <laughs> yeah it's going to be a whole lot of us saying ouch all right so um I'm not going to backtrack and go over the fruits we already discussed because that's just going to make the video a lot longer than it needs to be. So make sure you catch the replay. And let's go ahead and um, 
I have lots of paper going on. We'll pick up where we left off. So the last one yesterday where we left off, where we talked about was being devastated or angered by criticism. And we talked about how proud people struggle a great deal with criticism, right? And so that's where I left off. So we're going to pick up where we left off. Um, the next fruit we're going to um, talk about is being unteachable. I think we all know somebody you just for no matter what they just don't listen you can't teach them anything you can't teach them anything guess what that's rooted in pride <clears throat> being unteachable is rooted in pride rooted in pride many proud individuals know it all and we all know at least one person that feels like they just know it all right and you we refer to them as such oh sarah she's such a know-it-all oh annie is such a know-it-all right we all know someone that is a know-it-all that is rooted in pride all right and they think that they're superior and they can't seem to learn anything from anybody that is not a good thing that is rooted in pride so how do we fight pride? We fight it with the word. So if you are unteachable, how do you fight it with the word? So the scripture reference, I'm going to give two. Um, the first one is Proverbs 19.20. Y'all write this down and someone please type this in the comments. Proverbs 19.20 and then John 9.13 through 34. John 19. 9 13 through 34 let me say it again proverbs 19 20 and then john 9 13 through 34 second fruit is being sarcastic hurtful or degrading we can all raise our hands to that and say that we know someone right who is like that good morning good morning to those of you that just tuned in please please share the broadcast you never know who needs to hear this message after you share it type in hashtag share it and also share at least one thing in the comments that you're thankful for so being sarcastic hurtful or degrading is rooted in pride proud people can be very unkind people all right and those who belittle other people usually want to raise themselves up above others and we can all say that we know someone who is like that and listen I believe that I used to be very sarcastic and not intentionally being hurtful and degrading but that comes along with being sarcastic um, and that was one of my defense mechanisms that I had in place to protect myself not really realizing that I don't I didn't need those defense mechanisms put in place because I have one who can protect me right and his name is Jesus right so we don't have to run around and have these walls up or these defense mechanisms put in place to protect ourselves all right and and so scripture reference is Proverbs 11, 12, Proverbs 11, 12. If someone can type this in the comments and also Proverbs 12, 18, Proverbs 11, 12, Proverbs 12, 18. Thankful for life. Amen. Um, another fruit, fruit of pride. What is the fruit? What are we talking about? If you're just tuning in behaviors or attitudes that we need to stop doing that we need to listen for and if um we are you know if any of this fruit is showing up in our life what did we say that we are going to commit it to god in prayer right and we're going to memorize scripture because we fight pride with the word right we fight it with the word we fight anything that is not of god with the word um, so another fruit we're talking about today is a lack of service, a lack of service, a lack of service. We all know somebody, we all know people that just will not serve for anything that's rooted in pride. All right. Proud people may not serve because they are not thinking of others or because they want to, um, they want to be served. And Jesus Christ himself came, you know, not to be served, but to serve. And so proud people they don't want to serve they don't want to serve all right um another fruit of pride is a lack of compassion Ooh, a lack of compassion and that was me for a long time and i think for me it was towards certain people towards certain p towards certain people and the lord really had to deal with me in that area um, a lack of compassion proud people are really concerned for others and their concerns um, they cannot see beyond their own desires. Yeah, somebody type in hashtag ouch. You don't have to do that. If it's you, you don't have to say anything. Hashtag ouch. All right, Matthew 5, 7, scripture reference. I'm going to give two for that as well. Matthew 5, 7 and Mark 3, 1 through 6. Mark 3, 1 through 6. 
Matthew 5, 7, and Mark 3, verses 1 through 6. Definitely read Mark 3, verses 1 through 6. All right, and so let's talk about some more fruit. Being defensive or blame shifting. Who would have ever thought that was rooted in pride, right? Being defensive or blame shifting. Being defensive or blame shifting. Let me say it one more time. Being defensive or blame shifting. You would not have thought that was rooted in pride, would you? All right. You will often hear a proud person say, are you saying it's my fault? Well, what about you? Well, it's because I did this because of so-and-so. I responded this way because of so-and-so. Blame shifting. Blame shifting. We try to, <laughs> and I say we, because that was me for a long time. We try to explain away everything. We try to explain away everything. We will never take responsibility, right? Always blame shifting. Everything that went wrong in my life was everybody else's fault. It was my mama's fault. It was my auntie's fault. It was my grandma's fault. It was my dad's fault. It was my stepfather's fault. It was the mother's birthday and boyfriend's fault. Everything was everybody else's fault. And at some point, I had to take responsibility, right? A little rabbit trail. Blame shifting, being defensive. That was me for a long, long time. Now I'm banging on the table. For a long, long time. It's rooted in pride. How do we fight that? We fight pride with the word. Scripture references that we're going to meditate on for this is Genesis 3, verses 12 through 13. Good morning to those of you that are just tuning in. Listen, you all, please share this broadcast so we can get this out. People need to hear this. All right, this is not about me. It's about this message. All right, because listen. The devil is a liar. Let's just go ahead and type that in. You know, we will no longer be unaware, right? So we're talking about all the fruit of pride, all right? So um, Genesis 3, 12 through 13. Genesis 3, um, 12 through 13, all right? And Proverbs 12, 1. Let's read Proverbs 12, 1 as well. Proverbs 12, 1. All right, here we go. Proverbs 12, 1. All right, let's talk about some more fruit. We have a few minutes. Yes, let's talk about some more fruit. A lack of admitting when you are wrong. A lack of admitting when you are wrong. A proud person will make many, many excuses. I was tired. I had a bad day. I didn't know. I didn't feel well. I forgot. Nobody told me. Listen, listen, I used to be the queen. Can you all listen? Believe this. I used to be the queen of excuses. And that's why I'm so big on no excuses, hashtag no excuses, and have a, a, a very, 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 my patience is this big when it comes to making excuses, a very low tolerance for excuses, because I used to be that one that made excuses for everything, that made excuses for everything, not only not wanting to admit when I was wrong, just making excuses in general. And that's why my tolerance is so low. And a lot of times people are making excuses, little rabbit trail, and don't even realize that they're making excuses. And so there is some where I bring it to their attention, you know, you know, that's an excuse, right? They see it for what it is and they correct it. But then there's somewhere I'm like, you know, that's an excuse, right? And they get mad and they get offended. But I'm okay with that because at some point they always come back and say, you know what? I apologize. I was mad and I offended, but you were right. It was an excuse. And so getting back to this, a lack of admitting when you are wrong. That's right. Y'all type in, type in hashtag no excuses. And it's so easy to make excuses. And I'm not saying I don't make them, but I recognize them right away now. Whereas before I wouldn't even recognize it as an excuse. All right. And so another fruit of pride is a lack of admitting when you are wrong. And listen, we all know. People that just will not admit it doesn't matter. They will never admit, right, when they were wrong. That's rooted in pride. Listen, another fruit, a lack of asking for forgiveness. A lack of asking for forgiveness. And that was me for a very long time. I had my own excuses 
right for not asking wanting to ask for forgiveness i have my own reasons that just sounds a lot nicer a lot better than excuses for not wanting to ask for forgiveness so that's why the lord has dealt with me in that area and i even told you all just yesterday i called someone that i feel like i offended three years ago actually it was closer to four years three and a half years ago asking for forgiveness she's like what P people don't do this what you know so a lack of asking for forgiveness proud people rarely admit their sin or ask for forgiveness they just won't do it pride will not allow them to do it pride will tell them it's okay you have the right to hang on to that unforgiveness because listen pride will deceive you right pride is very deceptive it'll try to make you believe it's your friend i need you all to type in the comments pride it's not my friend all right and so they, they just won't do it pride will not allow them to um, but listen, a spirit is being exposed on today, right? Being exposed. That's right. They won't apologize for a thing. Uh, Matthew 5, 23 and 40. Matthew 5, 23 and 40. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Sorry, you all. I didn't, that didn't come out right. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Matthew 5, verses 23 and 24. All right, so we're going to stop there <clears throat> with the fruit of prayer. And what's today? So I think um, the next two days, I think we'll be done. We'll wrap this up on Thursday. All right, so I think that was enough um, because for some, you may have fought, you know, you may have seen all these fruits that we just talked about today. So it's just going to take some time. And again, I don't want to rush through this and give too much. All right, so we remember, remember that um, we are taking the fruit of pride challenge. Um, I need to find another word for challenge because we're not really challenging any. Yeah. Um, we're going to sit prayerfully before the Lord and um, ask him if this if uh, he sees any other fruit in our lives that hasn't been revealed to us today. And we're going to commit this fruit in prayer. I had a note and I can't find which page I wrote it on. We're going to commit this fruit in prayer and we're going to med um, memorize and meditate on the scripture references that I gave you all. All right. And so, listen, I thank you all for hanging in there with me. I feel like, you know, um, this is something that we needed. To, we needed to take our time um, going through. So I did not want to speed through this, but we are going to wrap this topic up, you know, by Thursday and we'll be done by Thursday. So just hang in there. Is that tomorrow? So it might be it might be Thursday. Could even be Friday, but that's all right. We'll finish it. I just don't want to rush. I could easily have given you all of this and said, okay, have a great day, but I didn't want to do that. All right. So Ingrid, let's see what Ingrid said. I called my good friend yesterday after three years and apologized to that and asked for forgiveness. She did not accept. We listen, exactly. That was the same thing that happened. We, she didn't expect the phone call from me. She did not expect it, but she was like, it blessed her. You know, it really did. It blessed her. You know, and so we ended up talking for a good while too, kind of catching up. How's your husband? How are the kids? How's life? You know, and just kind of catching up. So that's a great thing. All right, let's move on. Um, and so we know that we overcome pride with humility, right? We overcome pride with humility. So we talked about the fruit, which are the behaviors and attitudes that we need to stop doing. And then what did we do after that? We um, went and talked about some of the um, specific ways to humble ourselves, which are attitudes and things that we should be doing. Um, so let's pick up where we left off. All right, so yesterday, the last one uh, we talked about was asking for forgiveness for wrongs we've done because we see today that, you know, the lack of asking for forgiveness and admitting when you're wrong is rooted in pride. So some way to correct that behavior is practice asking for forgiveness um, for the wrongs that you've done. All right. Um, another one is taking how funny how these are just kind of falling in line. So um, another one is taking time for prayer and fasting, taking time for prayer and fasting. And because that one's on my list for today, let's um, let me tell you, I, I had all this planned out. I want to leave you all with one more fruit since that's on my list for today. I want to leave you all with one more fruit. All right. And another one is a lack of biblical prayer a lack of biblical prayer that is rooted in pride. Pride will tell you you don't have enough time. 
Pride will tell you you're too busy. Pride will tell you that it's not important. You know, pride will tell you you don't have time to read the word. You know, pride is not your friend, right? So it'll tell you all of these lies, all right? And so most proud people pray very little, if at all, because they think they don't need God. So when we say we don't have time for prayer, we don't have time to read the word, we don't have time, we don't have time, we don't have time, it's not a time issue, it is a heart issue, all right? And God wants to deal with the matters of the heart, all right? It is not a time issue, it is a heart issue. Go ahead and type in the comments, hashtag ouch. So I wanted to, and that was what we were going to talk about tomorrow, but we talked about it today. So a lack of biblical prayer. Pride is not your friend. Pride will lie and tell you you don't have time. It's okay. It's no big deal. You can do it tomorrow. It's not a time issue. It's a heart issue. So a scripture reference or scripture references for that is Luke 18 verses 10 through 14. Oh, so glad. Yes, definitely catch the replays. So Luke 18 verses 10 through 14. Luke 18 verses 10 through 14. So it's not a time issue. So the fruit, again, is the attitude or behavior that we need to stop doing. Attitude or behavior that we need to stop doing. All right. And specific ways to be humble are um, attitudes and things that we should be doing. So how do we overcome that? Um, you take time for prayer and fasting. Take time for prayer and fasting. Um, another way to surely humble yourself is to give sacrificially. Proud people cannot and will not do that. Give sacrificially. Um, another way to um, humble ourselves is to give testimony of God's grace and to be a servant. And to be a servant. Listen, there's no better way than to overcome pride. Other than serving, 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 and serving some more. So serve, 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 serve some more, right? Serve, 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 serve some more, right? Just keep serving. Um, so tomorrow, we're going to go over a personal evaluation. And so um, there are a list of questions. There's quite a few here, so I may have to leave some of these off. We're going to go through a list of questions um, to help us to see how humble are we really? How humble are we really? Because uh, again, humble, being humble is not a feeling, right? We learned that on day one, being humble is not a feeling. And a lot of us think that we're humble because we feel humble. So we're going to do a personal evaluation by simply asking ourselves some questions. All right. And then we will see how humble are we really? How humble are we really? Um, and this is an evaluation I had to do my own self years ago because I thought I was the most humble person because I felt humble because I did these things, right? And when my pastor friend at the time, really, really good friend, real, did not have a problem with telling me the truth, was like, no, mm -mm. I see pride. Pride would not allow me to see that in that moment. I got offended and my feelings were so hurt and I came home and I was like, okay, is she right? You know, that's one thing I will do. I might get mad and I might get offended, but I'm always going to come back <laughs> and be like, okay, Lord, was she right? And he showed me. And so I had to do a person, my own personal evaluation. And then I realized I wasn't as humble. This is being transparent as I thought I was, you know, because we think, <clears throat> excuse me, humble is a feeling. Humble is not a feeling. Humble is not a feeling. All right. Um, so our declaration again for today, go ahead and type this in the comments. I decree and declare that I will fight pride with the word of God. Hashtag waking early for his glory. I decree and declare that I will fight pride with the word of God. Hashtag waking early for his glory. I decree and declare that I will fight pride with the word of God. Hashtag waking early for his glory. So if this has blessed you, go ahead and share the broadcast. Remember, if you are tuning in for the first time, there are three other videos. You can just scroll my timeline and you'll see pride in the title and go ahead and catch the replay. You definitely want to catch um, the replay. So listen, pride is not your friend. All right. Pride is not your friend. So go ahead and type that in the comments. Pride is not my friend. We already see, you know, God's attitude towards towards pride. And listen, that should be enough to want to cause us to dig deep, to lean in and pay attention, right? To look for this fruit 
um, which are the behaviors and attitudes that we want to stop doing and put into practice some of the things that we should be doing. Um, meditate, meditating on these scripture verses because, you know, when we're sick in any area, what do we do? We have to take our medication and the, all these scripture references that I gave you all as God's medicine, our medicine. All right. So um, remember, Zariah has to be at work at six o'clock this morning. I was not happy to see that on our schedule. So I'm going to go ahead and we're listening to the one year Bible, but I can't stay on too long after to talk to you all. So um, as soon as it's over, I may be like, OK, bye. But you all can still type in your um, go ahead and begin to type in your takeaways. Go ahead and do that now from the first part. What is something that stood out to you? What was your aha moment? What is something that you will do differently because of what you heard? That's right. Humility is that. Yep, it's definitely an attitude, not a feeling. All right. So, um, all right, let's go. Let's listen. Um, if you can stay, please stay. If you have not shared, now is a great time to share as we are about to listen to the one-year Bible. And let's go ahead and do that. You're going to hear some noise in the background. Let's grab our one-year Bibles and grab our water. And I am going to press play. Today is the 17th, all right? Okay. I might have to use another device. Okay, here we go. If you can hear this, type a number two in the comments. June 17th. Our reading in the Old Testament today comes from 1 Kings chapter 18. Verses 1 through 46. Right. Where we'll be searching Grab for water. water. Ahab's capital city suffered severely. And we'll be searching for Elijah. Ahab wanted to kill Elijah, but God protected his servant. We commend Obadiah for protecting the prophets. But that was not the final solution. And then we'll be searching for God. Baal was the storm god. So he should have been able to send some rain, but he failed. Elijah rebuked the people, repaired the altar, and relied on the Lord. And God revealed himself by sending fire. Elijah was the man of the hour. He honored God, and God honored him. Some may ask, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Perhaps a better question is, where are the Elijahs? And with that, let's begin our reading today in the Old Testament. June 17th, 1 yes. Kings chapter 18, verses 1 through 46. After many months passed, in the third year of the drought, the Lord said to Elijah, Go and present yourself to King Ahab. Tell him that I will soon send rain. So Elijah went to appear before Ahab. Meanwhile, the famine had become very severe in Samaria. So Ahab summoned Obadiah, who was in charge of the palace. Now Obadiah was a devoted follower of the Lord. Once when Jezebel had tried to kill all the Lord's prophets, Obadiah had hidden 100 of them in two caves. He had put 50 prophets in each cave and had supplied them with food and water. Ahab said to Obadiah, We must check every spring and valley to see if we can find enough grass to save at least some of my horses and mules. So they divided the land between them. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. As Obadiah was walking along, he saw Elijah coming toward him. Obadiah recognized him at once and fell to the ground before him. Is it really you, my lord Elijah? he asked. Yes, it is, Elijah replied. Now go and tell your master I am here. Oh, sir, Obadiah protested. What harm have I done to you that you are sending me to my death at the hands of Ahab? For I swear by the Lord your God that the king has searched every nation and kingdom on earth from end to end to find you. And each time he was told, Elijah isn't here. King Ahab forced the king of that nation to swear to the truth of its claim. And now you say, go and tell your master that Elijah is here. But as soon as I leave you, the Spirit of the Lord will carry you away to who knows where. When Ahab comes and cannot find you, he will kill me. Yet 
I have been a true servant of the Lord all my life. Has no one told you, my Lord, about the time when Jezebel was trying to kill the Lord's prophets? I hid a hundred of them in two caves and supplied them with food and water. And now you say, go and tell your master that Elijah is here. Sir, if I do that, I'm as good as dead. But Elijah said, I swear by the Lord Almighty, in whose presence I stand, that I will present myself to Ahab today. So Obadiah went to tell Ahab that Elijah had come, and Ahab went out to meet him. So it's you, is it, Israel's troublemaker? Ahab asked when he saw him. I have made no trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. You and your family are the troublemakers, for you have refused to obey the commands of the Lord and have worshipped the images of Baal instead. Now bring all the people of Israel to Mount Carmel, with all 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah, who are supported by Jezebel. So Ahab summoned all the people and the prophets to Mount Carmel. Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, How long are you going to waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only prophet of the Lord who is left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Now bring two bulls. The prophets of Baal may choose whichever one they wish, and cut it into pieces, and lay it on the wood of their altar, but without setting fire to it. I will prepare the other bull, and lay it on the wood on the altar, but not set fire to it. Then call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by setting fire to the wood mm -hmm. is the true God. True God. And all the people agreed. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, You go first, for there are many of you. Choose one of the bulls and prepare it, and call on the name of your God. But do not set fire to the wood. So they prepared one of the bulls and placed it on the altar. Then they called on the name of Baal all morning, shouting, Oh, Baal, answer us! But there was no reply of any kind. Then they danced wildly around the altar they had made. About noontime, Elijah began mocking them. You'll have to shout louder, he scoffed, for surely he is a god. Perhaps he is deep in thought, or he is relieving himself, or maybe he's away on a trip, or he's asleep and needs to be wakened. So they shouted louder, and following their normal custom, they cut themselves with knives and swords until the blood gushed out. They raved all afternoon until the time of the evening sacrifice, but still, there was no reply, no voice, no answer. No answer. Then Elijah called to the people, Come over here. They all crowded around him as he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down. He took twelve stones, one to represent each of the tribes of Israel, and he used the stones to rebuild the Lord's altar. Then he dug a trench around the altar, large enough to hold about three gallons. He piled wood on the altar, cut the bowl into pieces, and laid the pieces on the wood. Then he said, fill four large jars with water and pour the water over the offering and the wood. After they had done this, he said, do the same thing again. And when they were finished, he said, now do it a third time. So they did as he said, and the water ran around the altar and even overflowed the trench. At the customary time for offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. O Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people will know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to yourself. Immediately, the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up all the water in the ditch. And when the people saw it, 
They fell on their faces and cried out, The Lord is God! The Lord is God! Mm -hmm. Then Elijah commanded, Seize all the prophets of Baal! Don't let a single one escape! So the people seized them all, and Elijah took them down to the Kishon Valley and killed them there. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go and enjoy a good meal, for I hear a mighty rainstorm is coming. So Ahab prepared a feast, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel and fell to the ground and prayed. Then he said to his servant, Go and look out toward the sea. The servant went and looked, but he returned to Elijah and said, I didn't see anything. Seven times Elijah told him to go and look, and seven times he went. Finally, the seventh time, his servant told him, I saw a little cloud about the size of a hand rising from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, Hurry to Ahab and tell him, Climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. And sure enough, the sky was soon black with clouds. A heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm, and Ahab left quickly for Jezreel. Now the Lord gave special strength to Elijah. He tucked his cloak into his belt and ran ahead of Ahab's chariot all the way to the entrance of Jezreel. June 17. And now we turn our attention share the video if you to the New shared Testament. It. Our reading today takes place in the book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 1 so through 30. Good, so good. Where we'll see some people make things happen. Peter was available to the Lord, and God used him to officially bring Gentile believers into the church. And we'll see that some people hear that things happen. This category may include most of us. But how do you respond when you hear that God has done something new? We are to test all things, hold fast what is good. And we'll see that some people oppose things happening. The legalistic members of the Jerusalem Assembly attacked Peter for eating with the Gentiles. So he explained how God had led. Now some people help other people make things happen. Barnabas enlisted Saul and put him to work in the Antioch church, which led to their going together to the Gentiles with the message of salvation. And with that, let's begin today's reading in the New Testament. June 17th, Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 30. Soon the news reached the apostles and other believers in Judea that the Gentiles had received the word of God. But when Peter arrived back in Jerusalem, some of the Jewish believers criticized him. You entered the home of Gentiles and even ate with them, they said. Then Peter told them exactly what had happened. One day in Joppa, he said, while I was praying... I went into a trance and saw a vision. Something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners from the sky, and it came right down to me. When I looked inside the sheet, I saw all sorts of small animals, wild animals, reptiles, and birds that we are not allowed to eat. And I heard a voice say, Get up, Peter, kill and eat them. Never, Lord, I replied. I have never eaten anything forbidden by our Jewish laws. But the voice from heaven came again. If God says something is acceptable, don't say it isn't. This happened three times before the sheet and all it contained was pulled back up to heaven. Just then, three men who had been sent from Caesarea arrived at the house where I was staying. The Holy Spirit told me to go with them and not to worry about their being Gentiles. These six brothers here accompanied me and we soon arrived at the home of the man who had sent for us. He told us how an angel had appeared to him in his home and had told him, Send messengers to Joppa to find Simon Peter. He will tell you how you and all your household will be saved. Well, I began telling them the good news. But just as I was getting started, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as he fell on us at the beginning. Then I thought of the Lord's words when he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And since God gave these Gentiles the same gift he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to argue? When the others heard this, 
all their objections were answered, and they began praising God. They said, God has also given the Gentiles the privilege of turning from sin and receiving eternal life. Meanwhile, the believers, who had fled from Jerusalem during the persecution after Stephen's death, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch of Syria. They preached the good news, but only to Jews. However, some of the believers who went to Antioch from Cyprus and Cyrene began preaching to Gentiles about the Lord Jesus. The power of the Lord was upon them, and large numbers of these Gentiles believed and turned to the Lord. When the church at Jerusalem heard what had happened, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw this proof of God's favor, he was filled with joy, and he encouraged the believers to stay true to the Lord. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit, and strong in faith, and large numbers of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went on to Tarsus to find Saul. When he found him, he brought him back to Antioch. Both of them stayed there with the church for a full year, teaching great numbers of people. It was there at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. During this time, some prophets travel from Jerusalem to Antioch. During this time, some prophets travel from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up in one of the meetings to predict by the Spirit that a great famine was coming upon the entire Roman world. This was fulfilled during the reign of Claudius. So the believers in Antioch decided to send relief to the brothers and sisters in Judea, everyone giving as much as they could. This they did, entrusting their gifts to Barnabas and Saul to take to the elders of the church in Jerusalem. My, my, my. Today we're reading Psalm 135, verses 1 through 21. The psalmist opens his song praising the Lord four times, and he ends it blessing the Lord four times. In between, he gave four excellent reasons why the Lord deserves your heartfelt praise and mine. To begin with, he's the God of salvation. In his grace, he chose you. In his mercy, he made you a special treasure. Amen. He is the God of creation, which means he provides for you day after day and gives you the things you need. He is the God of history. He worked for Israel and through Israel to bring about his great plan of salvation. And he is the God of celebration. These verses we're about to hear parallel Psalm 115 and show the greatness of the living God in contrast to the dead idols of the nations. Celebrate the Lord today. Bless his holy name. Psalm 135, verses 1 through 21. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, you who serve the Lord. You who serve in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Celebrate his wonderful name with music. For That's the Lord like has amen. chosen Jacob for like himself, Israel for his own special treasure. I know the greatness of the Lord, that our Lord is greater than any other God. Hmm. The Lord does whatever pleases him throughout all heaven and earth and on the seas and in their depths. He causes the clouds to rise over the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from his storehouses. Mm. He destroyed the firstborn in each Egyptian home, both people and animals. He performed miraculous signs and wonders mm. in Egypt. Pharaoh and all his people watched. He struck down great nations and slaughtered mighty kings. Sihon, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and all the kings of Canaan. He gave their land as an inheritance a special mm. possession to his people, Israel. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your fame, O Lord, Ooh, is known to every generation. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. Their idols are merely things of silver and gold, shaped by human hands. They cannot talk, though they have mouths, or see... Though they have eyes, but they cannot, they cannot hear with their ears or smell with their noses. 
and those who make them are just like them, as are all who trust in them. Come on. O oh, Israel, praise the Lord. O oh, priests of Aaron, praise the Lord. O oh, Levites, praise the Lord. All you who fear the Lord, praise the Lord. The Lord be praised from Zion, for he lives here in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Y'all type that in the comments. Praise 17, the Lord. Somebody type that in for me. Mm. It is safer to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than to confront a fool caught in folly. If you repay evil for good, evil will never leave your house. Listen, so Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you, Father, for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I loved um, Psalm 131, 35. Um, 15 says the idols of the nations are merely things of silver and gold shaped by human hands. They have mouths, but they cannot speak and eyes, but cannot see. They have ears, but cannot hear and noses, but cannot smell. And those who make idols are just like them, as are all those who trust in them. Listen here. All right, you all, I have to go. Um, we have to leave at 5.50 a.m. in the morning. That's kind of crazy to me, but <laughs> we have to leave out at 5.50. So um, you all go ahead and type your uh, takeaways in the comments if you have not already. Um, type in at least one thing that stood out to you. One aha moment. What is something you will do differently because of what you heard today? And if you have not shared the video, please share this. Um, you all have been blessed by uh, us studying on the spirit of pride. So go ahead and share it so that those on your timeline don't miss um, today's lesson. And I have to run. I'll type in the our um, what's our declaration for today. I decree and declare I will fight pride with the word of God. Hashtag waking early for his glory. Don't forget to drink your water. Um, you all know what to do. If you went walking while you were listening to the word, type a number three in the comments. I believe that's the number we're using for that, right? So drink your water, take your vitamins, go for a walk, and have a great day on purpose. And for those of you that asked, I do still have um, some more liquid vitamins on hand. I think I have like three or four bottles on hand. So if you want your vitamins let me know um please don't leave it in the comments because sometimes you'll all comment and message me comment stuff and it's so easy for me to miss it so send me a message um and i think that's it all right so i'll see you all tomorrow have a great day yes pride is not my friend that's right no it is not <laughs> no it is not let's see you have a blessed day as well all right, so I'm going to head out. Well, not head out, but get ready to head out. Bye, y'all. I need to make sure she ate something for breakfast.